Hello there, Harry Cliff here. Exciting particle physics results seem to be arriving a bit like buses at the moment. You wait 10 years for any signs of new physics and then two come along at once. First of all, on the 23rd of March, we had the announcement that the LHCb experiment at CERN had spotted beauty quarks decaying in ways that our best theory of particle physics, the standard model, can't explain. And then on the 7th of April, the muon G-2 experiment at Fermilab announced they'd measured the magnetism of the muon to be different from what the standard model predicts. Both stories made international news, including some pretty overblown headlines about the laws of physics being upended, mentioning no names. <clears throat> but hype aside, I do think these are the most exciting results we've seen in particle physics since the Higgs boson was discovered way back in 2012, and a lot of quite serious people are getting cautiously excited, and in some cases not so cautiously excited, about these new results, and there is a sense that we might be on the brink of a major discovery. So this video is going to look at these two results in a little more detail, including some reasons to be cautious as well as excited, before throwing caution to the wind and speculating wildly about what these results might be hinting at. If you'd like a short introduction to these two stories, then check out my last two videos, but I'll start with a quick recap. Both of these results are what physicists call anomalies, experimental measurements that disagree with the predictions of our best theory. Let's take the Fermilab result as an example. In essence, they made a fantastically precise measurement of the magnetism of a particle called a muon, which is a sort of heavy copy of the more familiar electron. The reason the magnetism of the muon is interesting is because it can be influenced by the existence of new fundamental particles that we've never seen before, changing its value from what the standard model of particle physics predicts. So if you make a precise measurement and then compare it to a really precise prediction and the two disagree, then that can be indirect evidence for the existence of some brand new particle or force. Anywho, here's the result they got, expressed as a number called G-2, which roughly corresponds to how magnetic the muon is. Marvel at that tiny error in the tenth decimal place. Now let's compare that to the state-of-the-art theoretical prediction. Again, the error is minuscule, also in the tenth decimal place. However, if you look carefully, you'll notice that these two numbers disagree from the eighth decimal place onwards. In fact, they disagree by over four times the combined experimental and theoretical error, or what we refer to in the particle physics biz as four sigma. The most exciting explanation for this disagreement is that some new particle or force is subtly changing the magnetism of the muon. If that's true, then it's Nobel Prizes all round and an exciting new age in our understanding of the universe. But hold the champagne for just one second, because that isn't the only explanation. There are three much more mundane reasons that you might get a result like this. One is simply that the experimental result is wrong. Perhaps there's some missed bias that screws up the result. Or it could be that the experimental result is right, but you're being fooled by a cruel statistical wobble, a bit like tossing ten heads in a row or an elephant quantum tunnelling into your living room. The final possibility is that theorists got their prediction wrong by missing or miscalculating the effects of the particles that we already know about in the standard model. We can only be sure that we're seeing signs of new physics if we can eliminate all three of these more mundane explanations. So how does the Fermilab result stack up? Well, it seems pretty unlikely the experiment is wrong for one important reason. This is actually the second time the measurement's been made. Back in the early 2000s, an experiment at Brookhaven near New York measured the same quantity and got more or less the same result. Now, it's possible that they made the same mistake. They both use the same muon storage ring, for example, but it seems pretty unlikely. So what about boring explanation number two, a statistical fluke? Well, that seems pretty unlikely too. In fact, there's only about a 1 in 40,000 chance of getting a result that deviates from the standard model by this much, just thanks to a random wobble in the data. It's when we get to mundane explanation number three, a mistake in the theoretical prediction, that things start to get a little bit murky. Calculating the magnetism of muon is fiendishly difficult. You have to take into account a huge range of different quantum mechanical effects by running enormous calculations on supercomputers. It's so hard, in fact, that it took an international team of over 170 theorists to do all the sums. However, on the very same day that Fermilab released their result, a second team of theorists published their own rival prediction that's much closer to the experimental measurement. If they're right, then that means there's no anomaly to explain at all, and it's all been a big fuss about nothing. To know one way or another, theorists are going to have to slug it out and decide which theoretical prediction is right. 
But if the first prediction holds up, then it seems very likely that the muon G minus two experiment really are seeing signs of new physics. Okay, now let's cross the Atlantic to CERN near Geneva, home of the mighty Large Hadron Collider. About a month ago, my colleagues on the LHCb experiment reported that they'd seen particles called beauty quarks behaving in ways that we can't explain with the standard model. In particular, they compared how often these beauty quarks decay into a strange quark and two electrons versus how often they decay into a strange quark and two muons. Now, according to the standard model, the muon is in essence a carbon copy of the electron, just 200 times heavier. So we expect beauty quarks to decay into electrons exactly as often as they decay into muons. Or put another way, if you count the number of beauty quark decays into muons and divide it by the number of beauty quark decays into electrons, that number ought to be one with a pretty small uncertainty. Instead, my colleagues found that the muon decay appears to be happening less often than the electron decay. So that ratio comes out at 0.85 plus or minus 0.04. Again, experiment and theory don't agree with each other, and they disagree by about three errors, or what we call three sigma. So less significant than the Fermilab result, but nonetheless quite intriguing. So what about our three boring explanations? Well, the theoretical prediction in this case is absolutely rock solid. Everyone agrees that this number is one. No ifs, no buts, nothing to see here, Gov. How about a mistake in the experiment? Well, the way the measurement was done is really robust against hidden biases or missed effects, and it was carried out with extraordinary care. And before the result was released into the world, it was pored over by 1,400 of my colleagues, and none of them could find any problem with the analysis. That said, you can never be absolutely sure you haven't made a mistake, so it's still an outside possibility. As for a cruel statistical wobble, well, with the current error, there's around a one in a thousand chance of getting a result like this just thanks to a random fluke in the data. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but we do a lot of measurements at the Large Hadron Collider, and so you might expect at least a few of them to end up this far from the standard model prediction. Imagine, for instance, that I told you I tossed a coin 10 times and got 10 heads in a row. Now there's roughly a one in a thousand chance of getting that result if the coin is fair. So you might conclude that there's something dodgy about the coin. But what if instead I told you that I tossed a thousand coins 10 times and one of them came up with 10 heads in a row? Then you probably wouldn't be all that surprised. This is known as the look elsewhere effect. And while it's quite easy to see in the coin example, it's much more difficult to take into account when you're dealing with a big particle physics experiment. So perhaps the LHCb result could be a random statistical fluke, but there's actually another reason why many people think this is pretty unlikely. This isn't the only anomaly we've seen. In fact, this is just the strongest of a whole family of results that seem to be pointing to the fact that there's something fishy going on with beauty quark decays involving muons. In several cases, these decays are happening less often than the standard model predicts. In others, the particles that are produced in the decay are coming flying out at strange angles. And what's made theorists really quite excited is they found that it's possible to explain all these anomalies at once if a new fundamental force exists in nature. Okay, that was admittedly a lot of physics. So here's a cat to help you relax for five seconds. Feeling better? Good. Because it's time to enter the speculation zone. Just for a minute or two, we're gonna forget all those caveats and assume that these anomalies are real. What would they be telling us about our universe? Well, it would be telling us that there's some brand new fundamental particles out there waiting to be discovered. That is a huge deal. We haven't discovered something fundamentally new that wasn't predicted by our existing theories for around half a century. And whatever new particles they are, they could be connected to some of the really deep outstanding problems in physics, like the nature of dark matter, why there's matter in the universe, or perhaps why the particles that we know about exist in the first place. When it comes to the beauty anomalies we've seen at LHCb, there are basically two favoured explanations at the moment. Both are a type of force particle. One called a Z prime, which would sort of be the carrier of some super weak new force that couples to electrons and muons slightly differently. And the other option is something called a leptoquark, a kind of amalgam of a quark and a lepton. Now, having evidence for a new force of nature would obviously be an enormous deal in its own right, but perhaps even more excitingly, it could be telling us something even more profound about the structure of the standard model itself. 
Currently in the standard model, there is this unexplained fact there are 12 matter particles, six quarks, the particles that make up the nucleus of atoms, and six leptons, which include the electron, the muon, and the neutrinos. And we don't know why these 12 particles exist. We just observe them in nature and we put them in by hand. Well, if there's a new force out there, either a Z-prime or a leptoquark or something else, it could be connected to why this particular set of particles exist and perhaps lead us to a more unified description of the particles that make up our universe. So the big job now is to figure out whether these anomalies are real or not. When it comes to LHCb, we're currently upgrading the detector, which will allow it to record data at a much higher rate, which means over the next few years, we'll be able to measure these anomalies more and more precisely, and hopefully get to the statistical threshold where we could rule them in or out. In the meantime, there are other experiments going on around the world. The Bell 2 experiment in Japan will be able to make the same measurements as LHCb and confirm some of these anomalies. And meanwhile, the experiment at Fermilab has only analyzed about 6% of the data they'll eventually record. So their measurement is gonna get a lot more precise as well. Obviously at the moment it's too early to say which way it's going to go, whether we're going to have found evidence of some new force of nature or whether these anomalies will melt away into the data. But whatever happens, the next few years are definitely going to be really exciting. Shameless self-promotion time. If you've enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. And if you'd like to find out more about particle physics and our ongoing quest to understand the physical stuff of our universe, then you can read about it in my upcoming book, How to Make an Apple Pie from Scratch, published this August, and you can pre-order a copy by clicking a link in the description.